Hi, I'm Chef Kevin Reading of Abbott's Grill, and welcome to Flavor, a show based on interesting people and places of the Chesapeake region. From culinary artisans to craftsmen around the area, we'll interview them, and I'll bring back the product and show you what I would do with it. So stay tuned, and hopefully we'll learn something together. Pfeiffer Orchards, homegrown fruits and vegetables since 1919. Bring the family and come enjoy the best the season has to offer. Enjoy wholesome entertainment for the kids. Now is the time to reserve your turkey and pies for the holidays. Pfeiffer Orchards, from our lands direct to your hands. Here we are in Milford, Delaware with a good friend of mine, Eric Williams from Miss Pillion River Brewing, the owner and founder of the brewery, and I appreciate you taking a little time out for us today. Well, I appreciate you coming by and checking out what we do here. Cool. Let's go back a little bit and say how long have you been here and tell me, kind of tell me the story a little bit. Well, we, um, we opened up in 2013, a couple years before that when I got the idea, it was right around my 40th birthday, uh, tired of working at my current job, didn't really... Um, I uh, wasn't really fulfilled, and so I woke up after my 40th birthday and said to my wife, Megan, honey, I'm opening up a craft brewery in Delaware, in Milford. And she said, uh, sure you are, honey. <laughs> and so uh, I uh, started started doing what uh, I thought was best, which was write, start writing business plans and staying up late doing that instead of sitting on my butt watching TV and drinking, drinking beer. Um, and my wife took notice of that and said something's different about this. Yeah, he's serious. Yes. <laughs> and so she started booking some trips and really starting to learn what she could about uh, the craft brewing industry. And it really was at Craft Brewers Conference 2012, I think it was, that um, we went out to San Diego and she, um, at the end of the trip, she said, all right, Eric, I'm sold. This industry is awesome. These people are mm -hmm. awesome. I've never seen anything where everybody just wants to help. No. And uh, that's a huge thing about craft beer. It's not always about beer, but I'd say almost more importantly, it's about people, people drinking the beer and the people right. uh, making the beer. We met about four years ago at a backyard event where you were showcasing some of your, your house brews. Uh -huh. And I remember going by and tasting them. And you know, I've, t I've done that with taste other people's home brews, and I walked away from the table. Of course, when you're talking to somebody, oh, this is great, and you're very course, encouraging. Yes, yes. But I walked away, and I remember saying to my partner Laura, I just was like, this is good. Like this is really good. Well, thank you. And uh, so it was exciting to be part of it during the beginning, and now you're in many restaurants, many states. Uh, maybe you can tell us about that. But it's been it's been a whirlwind since the day we opened. I did, I did what I thought was the best thing, which is surround myself by really amazing, talented people. Uh, train head brewer here to concentrate on the quality of the beer, um, good marketing of you know, our cans. When we started, when we opened up, it was all about the tasting room for about a month and a half, and then I realized that that was not going to be um, enough to sustain the business, especially the size. So um, we just started distribution about a month and a half into it. And, um, been trying to grow ever, um, ever since and basically a very controlled growth so it doesn't get out of hand mm -hmm. um, and we don't get too far and we don't want to disappoint people which um, if you can't get a beer that's usually when they're yeah. disappointed. No. Good. Good. Have a lag time. Yeah 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 it's interesting uh, for you know the, the accountant and myself we're always like oh sell it all sell it right. all and the sales <laughs> reps are like no but I have to explain to people why right. we're out. And, right. But we've garnered a really good reputation for making um, not only um, really high quality solid craft beer but a variety of it too yeah. which keeps our guys here interested our brewers here interested in brewing and also uh, keeps the um, restaurants and bars yeah. happy they can get these new beers that, that 
Right, and you guys are very innovative uh, with your beer variety, with your cans, the actual decorative part of your cans, uh, your names. Yes. Um, so it's well, it, it's funny because everybody gets really serious about beer. You can tell the serious people, you know, they're shaking the glass, sticking their nose in it, coming out with beer <laughs> dripping off their nose. That's cool, and we do that too, it's sensory stuff. But we, at the end of the day, we. Um, we don't want anybody to take us um, uh, or take yourself too serious. Take ourselves too yeah. serious, um, and also we want people to feel relaxed. So when they come right. here, they're like, "Wow, you know what? They were relaxed. They were cool. They just um, they uh, it's serious business." Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of families here that depend on us, but at the end of the day, we like to just sit back, have fun, and that's kind of the brand we want right. um, out there. It and makes it our fun. Can, our cans are, are fun, and yeah. so it's it's uh, it's all about fun. Um, there are some serious moments, you know, in any sure, small business. Sure. But it's a, uh, we believe it's a really fun place to uh, come and visit in um, central Delaware, southern Delaware. And, uh, there's a lot to offer here in Milford, a lot of new upcoming things. And uh, the, uh, just, you know, stop on by or check mm -hmm. us out and, uh, and uh, come see us. Yeah. Award winning beer, uh, a must see when coming to Milford, or it's a destination spot. Um, but I want to thank you for taking a little time out. It was fun to watch the canning today. Yeah, and, uh, it's, 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 inter it's an interesting process. Yeah, no doubt about it. So thank you, and uh, I'm going to grab some of the product here, and I'm going to go back to the restaurant and see what I can do with it. Excellent. Let me know when it's finished. All I'll right. be over to eat some of it. Thank you. Thank you. Pfeiffer Orchards, homegrown fruits and vegetables since 1919. Bring the family and come enjoy the best the season has to offer. Enjoy wholesome entertainment for the kids. Now is the time to reserve your turkey and pies for the holidays. Pfeiffer Orchards, from our lands direct to your hands. A master of farm-to-table cuisine, an award-winning duo of local ingredient brewing, join forces to create a culinary experience made from the best that Delaware has to offer. Brickworks Brewing and Eats in Smyrna, Delaware, a made-from-scratch fusion of Delaware's best, like glazed baby back ribs and apple jalapeno slaw, paired with drop trowel, Brickworks exclusive unfiltered IPA. Brickworks Brewing and Eats in Smyrna, Delaware, made from scratch from plate to glass. Hi, welcome to Miss Billion Fitness. Everything from step mills to treadmills, arc trainers, ellipticals, upright bikes, recumbent bikes, and even a couple of rowers. At Miss Billion Fitness, we have over 23 classes on the schedule every week from body pump to kickboxing to boot camp, spin classes. We do small group training, we have personal training. We even offer judo jiu jitsu program. We have a little bit of everything for everybody. I'm Chef Kevin Reading of Abbott's Grill, and welcome to Flavor, a show based on interesting people and places of the Chesapeake region. Stay tuned, and hopefully we'll learn something together. Welcome back. We're here with head brewer Ryan Maloney of Miss Million River Brewing, and uh, we've been friends for a while, uh, so I know a little bit of the story, but a lot of the viewers probably do not know the story, but um, how long have you been here with Miss Pillion? I've been here uh, with Miss Pillion uh, from day one. We actually tore down the, the walls and rebuilt them and uh, uh, installed floor drain the whole, the whole nine. I've uh, been here since uh, construction days. So. Yeah. What got you started originally? Like what, what was what fueled the passion for the brewing? I always had a hobby uh, growing up and then I was in the, I was in the Marine Corps. I was in the, uh, I worked for the USDA for a while and, and I just needed something to uh, Pass the time a little bit. Right. I like beer. I like beer. Right. And uh, so I started making it, and um, yeah, it, it started really loving it. And I thought, hey, I wonder if I can make money doing this. Yeah. And, uh, so I went to school for uh, brewing uh, at Siebel Siebel Institute, 
met up with Eric at a homebrew meeting and he was getting there out in a brewery and it just connected. Made sense. Made yeah. sense. So. so it kind of started as a hobby and then obviously you found out you're pretty good at it now. I got I don't know if I was started very good at it, but I, I, I right. came around to becoming better at it. Yeah. Now. Well I just know in the chef world I know that you can have five chefs have the same ingredients and come out with five different, you know, end results. Brewers, and brewers are very similar yeah. in that uh, that respect. Um, we actually adjust our uh, efficiencies and recipes tailored a little bit to the brewer. We, we want them to have a little bit of creative uh, feel to it, but um, consistency is key. So right. We, we know who's brewing and um, how to adjust. Right. And it's kind of a small fraternity too. It's like everybody kind of knows everybody. Everyone knows everyone. It's all um, Pennsylvania, Maryland. Right. Now, uh, you want to walk us through for people who are not, you know, avid brewers. Uh, we're kind of right behind the masher here, right? So, yeah, yeah. so what would be the the method here? So, uh, the the idea behind beer is to pull sugars from uh, from barley, wheat, those what all the ingredients. So, to do that, you have to uh, crush. The, uh, the ingredients of barley, your wheat, your oats, um, and add uh, hot water. We use single infusion mashing, um, the term is a little bit different, everyone has a little different technique. But this is our mashed water tub. We mix about 169 degree water, a typical beer, with barley, oats, wheat, whatever it is, to, hurt, to hit a separate, uh, a certain temperature. So when they're, you know, they start with 169, after you mix the, the barley, it might hit 152. Um, that's kind of where we're looking for. It depends on the recipe. Mm -hmm. what you're um, but uh, it starts there. There's a rest. Enzymes work on the starches uh, from the grain, the grain and the oats and whatnot. And um, we let it sit for about 60 minutes. It varies. Um, and then we rinse all the sugars that are extracted and, and, and converted from starches to sugars. Uh, and we send them to the boil kettle. So basically, we just rinse that off. Mm -hmm. so we're hot water on top and rinsing it off, and it's going over here to the boil kettle. At that point, we add our hops, uh, we use nutrients, stuff to help the yeast actually uh, uh, ferment out the sugars, because alcohol is, comes from the fermentation practice of the yeast, uh, uh, doing its magic basically on the sugars. We boil the wort for 90 minutes. Um, wort is the sugar water mixture that we've extracted from the mash tun, which is right here. Uh, we add our hops, we add our yeast nutrient, we add uh, uh, clarifying agents to help. Uh, if, if it's a beer that wants, we don't want it to be hazy, when it's clear, we add that in there. And then we cool it down. Pretty much sea level here in Delaware. And uh, 212 degrees is our boiling temp. We actually have to cool the, the uh, beer down in a very fast manner right. um, and send it to these tanks. These are fermenters. So we're actually going to cool in through our uh, heat exchanger here, which uses uh, glycol and uh, cold water on, on opposite plates to cool down um, about 500 gallons in about 35 minutes. Boiling uh, drives off oxygen. So we're going to send it over to add oxygen, put it in this tank, and we're going to shoot for about 67 degrees for most beers. Uh, depending on the yeast strain, you may vary the, the uh, temperature. We'll add our yeast, we'll set our tank to a certain temperature. The solenoids here control the temperature. They allow cold glycol on these dual jacketed tanks to maintain the right temperature. And after about two weeks, the beer is done. It's, it's, it's taken the sugar water, it's made alcohol, mm -hmm. other flavor components and compounds. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to send it over to the bright tank. The bright tank has three objectives. First objective is to we want a bit of carbonate beer, so you have that nice fizzy, buzz, and bubbly uh, sure. in your mouth. Beer is never the same without carbonate. Right. In fact, can all be quite unpleasant if you don't have it. You right. know when you don't have carbonated beer. Uh, the second uh, big thing it does is it clarifies the beer. So um, on styles where you want to clarify the beer, you're able to uh, let it sit, add a clarifying agent, and, and it'll settle out of the tank. And you're able to keg or can or bottle mm -hmm. um, from that. The other main thing is it, it allows you to empty this tank at an earlier stage. Start so over. More beer in earlier. Right. So as soon as the beer is in a, a, at that right stage, you want to send it to the bright. If there's bright space available, bright tank, you know, just with the backlog. Right. Um, 
and your keg can and bottle. Okay. So that's, that's that. We don't bottle here necessarily, but uh, can and keg. We definitely can and keg. Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, we are also co-partners in Brickworks. Absolutely. And a little bit different system there. We actually run right from the bright tanks right to the tap. It takes a step out of it. Yeah. And every time that you can eliminate that uh, uh, transfer step. Keep things a little fresher. It does. It keeps everything fresher. You're eliminating the risk. Yeah. And you can make a better product. Yeah, so the bright tanks like serve as big kegs. Big kegs. <laughs> big kegs that you pull from and... Um, should have the best. It's the fret you're pulling from about the freshest tank you can possibly. Get. Yeah. So brew pubs are great with serving tanks. It's 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 one of the freshest brews. Yeah. Ever. Well, Ryan's very humble. So, but I'm going to tell you, in a short uh, period of time, uh, they actually won two medals at the Colorado Beer Festival. They won a bronze and a silver. Uh, well, I'm sure you're proud of that. I am. We're pretty proud of it. I, we got a good team. Um, the team comes together. We don't. We all. Uh, have our hands in different parts of the process. Like I said, it's, it's a two-week or three-week process to make beer. It's no, it's definitely never any one person. But um, we have a good team here. Everyone's dedicated, and passionate. You know, we'll work 24 hours. We have Whatever's to, needed, right? Whatever we need to do. It's, yeah. it's, uh, beer first. Yeah. That's well, it. I love working with these guys, and after a hard day's work, uh, nothing's better than. No, it, it's it's <laughs> the best part about the job is when you're done. You can have a cold one <laughs> right. and relax, and, yeah. and it helps with the bonding process. And I, I think we have a really good new place. Yeah, and that's what I love about it too. I'm very craft oriented, very from scratch, and and uh, that I think is why the craft movement is so big right now. But hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Very informative. I'm going to head back to the restaurant and make something with your beer. Awesome. All Sounds right. Good. Thank you. We'll be back. It's all about the beer, and it's certainly all about the beards. Yeah. Hey, Eric here. Don't miss a thing at Miss Pillion River Brewing, the world's premier craft brewery located in Milford, Delaware. Stop on by for a sample, or a six pack, or a growler, or if you just want to stop by and have a pint. Check us out at MissPillionRiverBrewing.com. A master of farm-to-table cuisine, an award-winning duo of local ingredient brewing joins forces to create a culinary experience made from the best that Delaware has to offer. Brickworks Brewing and Eats in Smyrna, Delaware, a made-from-scratch fusion of Delaware's best, like glazed baby back ribs and apple jalapeno slaw, paired with drop trowel, Brickworks exclusive unfiltered IPA. Brickworks Brewing and Eats in Smyrna, Delaware, made from scratch from plate to glass. Hi, welcome back. We had a great time at Miss Pillion River Brewing with the boys, but we're back at the kitchen at Abbott's Grill. And we're gonna get ready and start the beer, bacon, and beamster soup. So we're gonna go ahead and do a beer, bacon, and beamster soup, and it's a volute style soup, and we're gonna be using the Miss Pillion brewed Abbott's IPA. We are brewing that at Brickworks in Smyrna, which is now our joint venture. Behind me, I've got a little rondo set up here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of bacon fat that we've rendered uh, over time. Every time we do a whole slab of bacon, we kind of save the fat for that reason. A roux is basically equal parts of flour and any fat. So if we wanted to use duck fat or butter or uh, just a regular oil, you could go ahead and do that. I'm taking about 10 pieces of bacon and I'm just rough chopping that right now. And the idea is I want to start using that into the base to create the flavor profile and you want to get that fairly cooked down before you proceed to the next to get that full bacon flavor. I have uh, one onion here, I'm just going to take the outsides off like that. Just kind of do a quick slice on that. I'm going to 
hold that for one second. I have a little fresh garlic that I've already sprayed down or pulsed down to get started with. I have a wooden spoon, so I'm just going to work that in here. And that's going to take a minute or two. Uh, we came up with this recipe last year around the same time, and it was such a big hit. Uh, I think we did a venture together or outdoor festival, and it was such a big hit, we ended up putting it on the menu. And we're using Beamster cheese, and today I'm using something a little bit different. I'm using uh, Red Dragon in addition. Red Dragon is a cheese from Britain, and it actually has stone ground mustard as well as beer in it. So it's right up our alley. And also have the Beamster cheese, which is uh, kind of like a caramely uh, cheese from Holland. It's like a cheddar. So between the combination of these two cheeses, it's just going to be an unbelievable flavor. So as that's going here, I'm going to go ahead and add my onions and we'll start sweating those down. I don't think there's any better flavor than onions and bacon cooking together. It's a roux-based soup, and the idea of a roux is a pound of roux, which is equal parts, so you know, it would be you know, eight a cup of uh, flour with a cup of fat, would thicken a gallon of stock, so if you kind of keep that in mind. So I'm gonna add the, uh, the butter there. And we're gonna start melting that in. couple bay leaves here. Gonna add that. As you can see, the bacon's starting to render with the onions. I started with a, a little bit higher heat and just reduced it down to a simmer. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh thyme in here as well. And then we're going to start to add the flour to make our roux. I'm going to go ahead and incorporate. We have eight ounces of butter and eight ounces of bacon fat. So it's going to take approximately a pint of flour. Add that in. I'm still trying to keep the roux white. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, cook that for about one or two more minutes before we start adding our liquid. So I have the little bit of the roux starting. I had turned the temperature down to not burn it. So we're going to add just a tiny bit more here just to tighten it up. Sometimes with the additional bacon, it's going to leach out a little extra fat. So that looks pretty good there. So at this stage right here, we have our roux going. It's cooked for about a minute or two. I'm going to deglaze with the beer I'm using the Abbott's IPA. I'm going to go ahead and add it in. Maybe turn up our temperature just a little. This will soak into the roux pretty quickly. And I'm going to add my chicken stock in batches. I'm going to go ahead and add about maybe two quarts of chicken stock. And I'm going to put in about a pint of heavy cream. If you can ever get Lewis Farms heavy cream, that is my cream of choice. It's not what I'm using today, but so I'm just going to use a touch of the heavy cream. About a pint of that. I'm going to add about uh, four or five shakes of Tabasco. Tabasco also kind of uses, you can use it as vinegar, so that'll be uh, something you can use. Let's go with a pinch of salt. Now bacon has a very salt, pretty heavy salt content, as well as some of the different cheeses, so you can always add more salt, hard to take it out, so be careful with your salt uh, in the beginning. and go from there. I have about a tablespoon or so of Worcestershire. I'm going to put that in there. And here is actually some stone ground mustard. I'm going to do kind of a heaping wooden spoonful, maybe actually a second one. Can't, can't have enough mustard. So we're going to let this cook a little bit and start getting its thickness. I'm going to add a bay leaf into it and we're going to get this nice and thick before I start adding the cheeses and we'll be right back and we'll show you the next step. Welcome to Miss Fitness. Everything from step mills to treadmills, arc trainers, ellipticals, upright bikes, recumbent bikes, and even a couple of rowers. At Miss Billion Fitness, we have over 23 classes on the schedule every week from body pump to kickboxing to boot camps, spin classes, 
We do the small group training, we have personal training, we even offer judo jiu-jitsu programs. We have a little bit of everything for everybody. When Abbott's Grill throws a party, you know it has to be good. From small business lunches and cocktail parties to full-service wedding receptions and off-site catering, Abbott's Grill makes planning simple and stress-free. We take care of every detail so you can enjoy your events. Abbott's Grill has catering options for every budget. Call 302-491-6736 or contact Laura Burton at abbottsgrillde.com. Be a guest at your own party with Abbott's Grill Private Dining and Catering. A master of farm-to-table cuisine, an award-winning duo of local ingredient brewing, join forces to create a culinary experience made from the best that Delaware has to offer. Brickworks Brewing and Eats in Smyrna, Delaware, a made-from-scratch fusion of Delaware's best, like glazed baby back ribs and apple jalapeno slaw, paired with drop trowel, Brickworks exclusive unfiltered IPA. Brickworks Brewing and Eats in Smyrna, Delaware, made from scratch from plate to glass. I'm Chef Kevin Reading of Abbott's Grill, and welcome to Flavor, a show based on interesting people and places of the Chesapeake region. Stay tuned, and hopefully we'll learn something together. Welcome back. The soup is getting nice and thick right now, and we're at that last stage. So we're going to go ahead and add our cheese in. It looks like a lot of cheese, but it's going to incorporate. The whole idea of this, it's a beer cheddar type soup. So we're going to put in here, we have probably two quarts of cheese. And we're going to just work that in. And this will only takes several minutes. The onions, the bacon, everything's already cooked. I have the consistency I want. Then we're gonna take this soup and add it to the blender. We're gonna blend it up and it's ready to go. Do a, a quick, uh, quick tasting to see where we are. Money. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and just put enough in for one soup. Pulse that down, get the onions and bacon all incorporated. Fresh thyme, pinch of nutmeg. We'll go ahead and pour this velvety soup in here. I have toasted off a couple pieces of uh, pretzel bread right there. And how about a couple pieces of uh, red dragon just to finish it off. So that soup is fantastic for a, like either a fall or winter type of day. Uh, easy to do and make sure to use Miss Pillion beer though. So anyway, um, I'm Kevin Reading. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and stay tuned for more episodes coming forward. Thank you very much.